I remember the video game violence Senate, hearings like they were yesterday. According to them, my bright little enforcer's light gun will turn me into a raging psychopath. The exact same people who were saying that the Kunki Genesis port of Mortal Kombat was a big threat to society. Instead of enriching a child's mind, these games teach a child to enjoy inflicting torture. Blood splatters from the contestants' heads. When a player wins, the so-called death sequence begins. The game narrator instructs the player to finish, and I quote, finish his opponent. Finish him. The player may then choose a method of murder, ranging from ripping a heart out to pulling off the head of the opponent with spinal cord attached. Finish him. Fatality. Then Night Trap came into play. The Sega CD game that rewarded players for assaulting teenage girls. Or maybe it was the exact opposite and you had to defend them? Now I realize that I wasn't playing this game the right way. Anyway, it's easy to look back and laugh at the ridiculousness of such a furor. But it really wasn't funny at the time. As a gamer, it was so annoying. Media were literally saying that I was a sociopath. Then I had to defend my hobby to my parents, who was just listening to other people who never played the game, that I was heading towards my bedroom to play some murder simulators. Hopefully gaming is treated with less hostility and more reverence today. Before going too far, please do all that stuff, it will make my day. For anyone who missed out on that particular period of hysteria, in the outfit screaming villains of just the flashback you need. 25 years since it was pulled from Toys R Us. The lobbyists worrying and youth corrupting Night Trap came back to life in 2017, ready to ruin a whole new generation of children's minds. So Night Trap sees you join Badass's Cat, aka Special Control Attack Team, who are currently investigating the Martins, a well-off couple whose daughter, Sarah, hosted a party from which its guests never returned, having hacked into the Martin household surveillance system. You must spy on Sarah's latest slumber night party via a selection of CCTV cameras, utilizing a series of traps hidden around the home to capture anyone or anything that may have bad intentions of harming the five girls in attendance. As the 30-minute story progresses, the mystery surrounding the missing guests unfolds, with chaos ensuing as the house becomes overrun with vampiric creatures known as ogres. Oh, Sarah! Victor and I have to make a visit to the ogres tonight. A delivery, actually. I am sure you and the boys can take care of everything here. I understand. It is the player's responsibility to capture the ogres, take down the Martin family, and save the 80s haircut rockin' babes, always resisting the ever-present and overwhelming urge to drop Megan, the funny one down the shoot yourself. All right, you are perfect. Nobody's ever done that. I'd go anywhere with you and feel secure knowing that you were at the controls. Nah, you wouldn't. <laughs> Pretty exciting stuff. However, that night trap loses its luster, running in real time. Gameplay essentially boils down to you, the player clicking from room to room, trapping the augers as they shuffle throughout the house in scenes replayed at Vidan Eternum. Should you miss a certain percentage of augers, it's game over, meaning you have to be so on point with catching those bad guys and then the gameplay becomes entirely robotic. Then you usually ended up learning by heart every steps needed to progress through the game and eventually finishing it. Any time spent watching the awkward drama narrative scenes will cause you to miss augers by the bucket load. Even 10 seconds spent in one room can be 5 seconds too long, even more frustrating. You can be locked out of the trap system entirely if you don't pay attention to the game's dialogue, as vital hints are dropped as to when to reset the color-coded security system. Talk. All right, I'll go downstairs and reset the access code to green. Missing the new color code will lead to trying each colors to find the good one. Oh, now what? What was that? And generally miss a lot of augers in the meanwhile. First time players may find it a very frustrating experience in trial and error. And for a game that isn't particularly playable to begin with, 
Frustration is the last thing your audience desires. As such, Night Trap is a game that is defeated by its own concept. There are often numerous narrative scenes happening simultaneously, but you have no time to watch them. You're needed in other rooms, trapping the blood-sucking vampires. At least the game has an undeniable charm to it. The characters are amusing in their flatness, and some woeful effects and acting help keep things amusing. And you, you keep your eyes open. We're trapped! No, we're not! We still have one chance! Control, you gotta help us! Wait, don't shoot! It's me! This I don't fool him! <laughs> Once you approach the story's finale, it's quite easy to become caught up in the wacky, low-budget chaos that unfolds on screen. Defeating the Martins is a ridiculous, yet somehow satisfying experience. For all its technical flaws, at least Night Trap can still raise a smile. Also, screaming villains have added some delightful new features. The video itself is as crisp as it will likely ever be, and even includes some never-before-seen footage. Because I shown you the new game footages until now, by respect for your eyes, but here is what was the original version. The Sega Control attack team. SCAT mission 230. Allowing you to have control of the cameras and the traps with this remote unit. Pretty disgusting, huh? This release also features a new mode, Survivor, which has you take down an endless stream of randomized augers until they eventually take over the house. It's a fun addition. Some neat aesthetic options include a newly designed hut, as well as recreations of the huts from previous releases of the game. The 25th anniversary edition also has an interesting selection of extras, unlocked after various in-game conditions are met. These include a new 2017 interview with co-creator, director Jim Riley, and some nostalgic production materials. The best feature, however, is a full recreation of Night Trap prototype scene of the crime. This is the first time that this has been readily available ever, and as such it is a pretty notable piece of gaming history. The fact is, regardless of any review, you'll pick up the new Night Trap for two main reasons, nostalgia or irony. Maybe you missed it the first time around, or maybe you just want to see all those scenes of hardcore violence you were warned about. I talked already about the newly designed HUD, but one big addition to the original version, and that the hardcore gamers from the first release will immediately catch. The thumbnail menu representing the camera feeds are now video previews, giving the player a heads up of when and where danger lurks. And just this thing, this little thing, this small and insignificant addition, which is totally normal in any surveillance system. I mean, in a surveillance system, it's logical to see what's happening live, directly on the screen, right? So this ability to see video previews is making the game finally playable. In the old version, you were switching from one part of the house to another all the time to be sure to not miss any ogres. It makes the game easier, really easier. For whatever it's worth, I like Night Trap. It is a bad game, but I like it. Creaming villains took a barely playable experience and have worked damn hard to transform it into a somewhat tolerable game at its relatively budget price. It's a nice purchase as a cute museum piece, a cheesy slice of gaming history. It certainly has its appeal and some very smart extras, but it must be clearly stated that the game itself, while it's definitely improved, remains as linear, as short-lived, and occasionally as frustrating as it has always been. If you never played it, give it a try. For $15, you're not taking a lot of risks. And if you played it when you were young, you will like the feeling it gives to activate all that traps. And now, breaking contact. <laughs>